We've been to the Betty Van Andel Opera Center before, but this time when we go in, it's gonna look a lot different. Come with me. We're in the house of opera that will hit our town this weekend. We're talking Grand Valley State University Opera Theater. Dale, take it away. Dale Streamer, you well, are all over this. Yes, we are. <laughs> I am all over this. Yeah, um, we're doing a Kurt Weill Cabaret, um, and it's uh, songs for a, a changing world. It's a compilation of Kurt Weill's greatest hits. So you know what his greatest hit was? Uh, you know it. Mac you know the it. knife. Mac the knife. Boom, boom. So, oh, the shark has pretty teeth, dear, ah. and he shows them pearly white. Just a jackknife has Mac Heath, dear, and he keeps it out of sight. Wow. I know. Get you so on stage. I, if I have to, I'll be there. <laughs> All so, right, so what do we hear? Yeah. So we're taking his greatest hits um, um, from his earliest time in Berlin to his time in Paris. So he had to escape fascism in Germany. Uh, 1933, he's out. He moves to Paris for a while. He writes in French for a while. Then he moves to the United States. He does opera and Broadway musicals here and some movie stuff. Uh, he writes musicals about apartheid in South Africa. Um, so he was a man of the world. I don't think any man who was a composer, any woman, any composer of the 20th century had a more broad-ranging effect on culture than Kurt Weill. The Doors covered him. Wow. Yeah. That brings it into He was, they did, oh, moon of Alabama. <laughs> so. What are your kids up to then? This is so, cabaret style? Cabaret is different from opera, not because the singing is different, but the format is different. So instead of having a long arc, Oklahoma, Curly meets Lori, mm -hmm. they fall mm -hmm. in love, and you know, they get married by the end. Right. Um, this is, I have a story to tell, and the whole universe of the story is contained in the song. Nice, very nice. Who are your performers? The your performers singers? are all students okay. at Grand Valley. Okay. And so they're all studying voice. And I chose this type of thing to do because it forces them to do their very best. They're all stars. There's not one person who has, you know, some sideline stuff and he's in mostly in the chorus or she's mostly in the chorus. Every student has solo um, time on the stage where they're forced to really create the moment, create the entire story. Are you grading them? I am not. <laughs> The audiences with their applause, so we hope for a standing O, of course. Are there visuals yes. with this Yes, presentation? so because we're in the Betty Van Andel Opera Center, it is a space that's made for rehearsal. So we're making it into a performance space by using what you can see behind me, which is a, a painting that has been projected 20 feet tall by Georg Gross, an artist who was painting during the time of Court Vile. So these are paintings that represent emotional and sociological aspects of the society during the time that Kurt Weill was writing. So this painting is called The Unemployed. Yeah. And I can wear, do I have to dress up and be fancy here? Oh, I, I hope Over you don't. We're at the don't. opera. Yeah, we are at the opera. No pinkies. Good, good. No pinkies. <laughs> we're, uh, we, jeans are great. So this is really uh, a come as you are. Um, enjoy the stories, be engaged by the, um, the history. So we have the story of Court Vile himself being told even before the, the curtain metaphorically goes, goes up. up. here in the right. Van Andel. So as, we, as you come into the theater, there is this, uh, the biography of mm -hmm. Court Vile is scrolling through with production pictures. So it'll be a very rich environment. Um, above these paintings during the performance itself, super titles, so that all the words are being broadcast as well as sung, as well as acted. Okay. When is the run specifically? Oh, we open Friday night, 7.30, uh, Saturday, we repeat at 7.30, Sunday, matinee at two. Why come see the show? Oh man, it's gonna be thrilling, it's gonna be engaging, it's going to be startling because some of these themes from 
the 20s and 30s and 40s mm. are playing again and and so it'll feel modern and current good Thank it's you. kind of exciting yeah yeah well, let's get our ticket and get our seat shall we have fun let's go take care this is gonna be great and here we are with Chrissy Ammon she's an opera singer performer and she's going to perform right Yes. <laughs> what would you like to demonstrate? Opera vocals, how are they different? How are they the same than any other song? Well, the big thing uh, about opera vocals is that uh, singers in the opera have no microphones and it's often in a very large space, lots mm -hmm. of seats, mm -hmm. and you have a whole orchestra <gasps> underneath you with no mic. So it's your two tiny little vocal cords against all of those instruments. So opera singers have to train in a bit of a different way to keep a lot of vibrancy and keep their voice really even and steady so the audience can always pick out their voice. Uh, so for example, Celine Dion, oh mio Sara. Uh, we have to use kind of open vowels and always have a lot of vibrancy or mm -hmm. uh, vibrato in the voice, which is when the it shakes just mm -hmm. a tiny little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and that difference differs from uh, cabaret singing, which oh. uh, you'll hear this weekend. Yes, yes. There's a lot uh, of similarities. All vocal production, you have to have the same principles of support and all of that. But uh, it's a little more conversational. It's usually mm. in a more intimate setting, okay. so you can uh, finesse the phrases. A lot of uh, the music is set in a uh, more middle voice mm. range, which is kind of where we speak. So right. uh, not the extremes of the voice. So. Uh, a little bit of a Kurt Vile song. Ooh, here we go. Tell me, is love still a popular suggestion or merely an obsolete art? Forgive me for asking the simple question. I'm unfamiliar with his heart. I'm a stranger here myself. So that's different. If I was going to sing it in an opera voice, Wait. tell me, is love still a popular <laughs> suggestion? It doesn't quite fit, you know? So you find, uh, you know, a little more uh, leeway with this cabaret style, and uh, which is important because I think as Dale spoke to, you tell a whole story in three yeah. minutes or something like yeah. that, you know? And this has got to be good for the students. Grand Valley State University Opera Theater. Yeah. Right? Like where you were at one time in your life. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I learned, you know, that's where I got my start. It's where yeah. I learned my craft. and. Um, I think it's great that they're doing this cabaret because it teaches the students how to tell a story. As artists and singers, we're mm. ultimately storytellers. So uh, to do these little vignettes and do these uh, uh, cabaret scenes, yeah. you know, it's really all about telling nice. a story. Give me one more. You one more? One more. Okay, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Do you know right. that one? I don't. <laughs> uh, yes, I do. I don't know what it is. Uh, Grand Valley State University Opera Theater. Yeah. This weekend. Yeah. Get your tickets. Ceiling door, oh, mio Sara. 